welcome to the show. Today, my guest is Arvinder Grover. Arvinder is the global head of HR at Soho Florida's International, or SFI for short, a global natural healthcare company. And Arvinder is part of the executive leadership team and she is passionate about the organization and its people. What you might not know about Arvinder is that she is known as a Nigella Lawson of SFI for her cooking. <laughs> Arvinder, to get to know you a little bit better, I have a couple of quick questions and I'll start them now. What is the superpower you wish you had? Fine. <laughs> <laughs> what is the best getaway destination that you went to? Um, follow the landmark trails of um, Dan Brown's book, Inferno. So oh. Florence, Venice, very oh. nice. <laughs> very nice. And what's the most adventurous thing you've ever done? Got myself a tattoo. <laughs> <gasps> <laughs> and what makes you sing out loud? Cooking and my friends. Mm. And last one, who's your greatest role model? Indra Nui. That's a good one. I agree. Um, Arvinda, I'm really keen to hear uh, your take on shifting your leadership and specifically your take on adaptability. And what are the biggest opportunities for you that you see to adapt? Um. I think the need for adaptability, um, given the times that we've just gone through, it's never been greater than it is now. Mm. And to survive change um, and change fatigue is what we hear the most these days. And if you work in SFI, you would know that very, very intimately. So I think to me, um, the four things that I really, really think are important mm. and I try to uh, practice them, don't get too attached to a single plan or a strategy. <laughs> Have plan B, C, D, ready. <laughs> Create a support system. So don't yeah. do it alone. You don't have to be alone. Look for a mentor, a coach, trusted mm. peer, professional. There are people around there ready to listen to you. Um, understand your own reactions to change. As much as we like to say that change is mm. difficult for everyone, even for the people who initiate change. So you need to know your own emotions and your thoughts about the change so you can help and support others in a better way. Absolutely. Um, and immerse yourself in new environments and situations. Just, just let it take you where it takes you. Wow. Fabulous for tips. Um, I've, I've even written them down. I'm going to keep them on top of my mind. Thank you. And in times of pressure, how do you ensure that your strategic thinking is still prioritized? Um, not to lose sight of where you're trying to get to. Um, and someone like me, it's easy to slip into the details and get into a solution mode and, and, and fix the problem. I just need to, you know, bring myself back and I suggest, you know, remind yourself, what are you trying to achieve? Keep the end in mind. Sometimes to get to the solution and the end game, you, you forget the long-term strategic thinking. So, you know, you keep that in the back of your mind and then you try and approach it to say, okay, what am I trying to achieve? Um, to me, again, it's about building and flying the plane at the same time. Hmm. Sometimes you just got to fly it and sometimes you take back and start building it again. <laughs> <laughs> I love that metaphor. That's a great one. <laughs> what do you do to keep up with leadership and industry developments? I'd say pre-COVID era, it was much easier to get to these seminars, the webinars and, you know, be there and network with people. Hmm. Um, I'm hmm. kind of learn from absolutely anyone. So the usual webinars, seminars, I'm a junkie for the free one. So anytime someone <laughs> sends me, here's a free webinar, I register. So you'll see me there. Um, and podcast. So listening to podcasts. Mm. And um, how do you get clarity in complex dilemmas? Um, that's an interesting one. Um, yeah. I, I try to take myself back to the core. Um, so I really need to sometimes and remind myself why I'm doing what I'm doing. Mm. So, you know, hand on heart. Um, there are in my role and you know, people in our field would understand and appreciate that. We need to remind the values we stand for. Yeah. What are we trying to achieve? They're tough decisions, they're tough recommendations we make to the business and the people. Um, so that helps in making that decision. Um, what I also try and encourage is making a decision is far more important than not making one. Mm. When, you're not, when you choose to not make a decision, you've made a decision. <laughs> 
And that's something I've certainly learned from you, Claudia, as well. So, yeah. Oh, thank you. That's Make a decision. Yeah, and I was making a note of that. Yeah, no, it's <laughs> absolutely. And when you reflect on the last couple of months, for instance, um, and, and specifically on these questions, what have you told yourself to be more or less of going forward? Um, you know, like I said in the beginning, the change we take, um, mm. how to manage that, so, you know, um, COVID came, we all had to go home and work remotely. That was a big change, adjusting yourself to the new environment. I love my office environment. Two months later, we all had to come back. And, and it took me two days to find my bearing again in the office that how do I concentrate in this same setting again? So yeah. I think the increased way, um, flexibility, new ways of working, being creative, um, continuing to enjoy. Um, I have this lovely quote on, um, you know, on my WhatsApp and other places, love what you do, do what you love. Yeah. So, you know, that, that's basically what gets me going. Yes. And, and I could totally agree when there's change fatigue, we go back to our values, right? That's, that's pretty much the foundation. And then when you love what you do, it, it feels effortless. Thank you so much for sharing your insights. It was great to talk to you and, and to listen to your wisdom. And thanks everyone for tuning in. I hope to see you next time. Keep shifting. Bye.